What does it take to build an app? Well, it takes a lot, my friend. I thought it would take me six months, but it turns out five years. Bilal Kore, founder of See It, a revolutionary new app allowing you to travel virtually anywhere in the world. Let's talk about the app. Yeah. What is Seer? Imagine you have the superpower to watch any place in the world, anytime, life. I've got many questions. Those are good questions. They do come up and when they come up, they tend to be serious. How much have you actually raised and how did you do it? I raised so far 130,000. I did the craziest thing in the world. I don't think anyone has done it. Probably it's illegal. <laughs> Even though we are building a virtual app, but there is nothing that can replace a face-to-face -face experience. No way. Quickly before the episode starts, we've noticed that 83% of you are not yet subscribed. If you find this podcast interesting and would like to support us, please subscribe and we'll make sure to deliver the best guests and best content possible. Thank you very much. Enjoy the episode. So Bilal, what does it take to build an app? Well, it takes a lot, my friend. I thought it would take me six months, literally, but it turns out five years. But I'll, I'll get to it. But first... Um, a bit of background story, how I ended up here. Um, I've been here since 2010. Um, I came here as a student. I did my bachelor's degree. I did my master's degree in software engineering. And the idea of the app, I had it since 2000, late 2014. Uh, and I have a habit. I have a notebook just like yours. Whenever I have a good idea, whether I am going to sleep or I am working, I write it down on my phone, on a notebook. So one evening I was doing my homework uh, while I was doing my bachelor's degree. <clears throat> this idea just hit my, my mind. Um, and when something hits my mind and I feel, oh, this has a potential, I write it down. Um, so I wrote it down, I closed the notebook, I continued doing my homework. And what happened is, you know, days go by but the idea keeps coming back to me as it keeps coming back to me while i am in the gym or in the market you know i keep developing it uh, at a certain point i realized this is good this is this has value it has matured enough and uh, so i decided to do it um, but i said all right i'll do my master degree and then i did it in software engineering so right after my graduation, I decided I would start my own company. I remember my supervisor clearly telling me, Bilal, get a job, make some money, and then do the app. Or do it on the side. Don't start right away. I said, sir, don't worry. That's going to take six months. I literally thought so. So at six months, I will have some money. This is a great idea. And I still believe so. But he was right, I was wrong. Um, and the journey was rough. I didn't realize it. But sometimes that is actually a good thing. You start hopeful due to that optimism and being hopeful is what leads you to actually do the thing. Because if I knew it's going to take, it was going to take me five years, probably I wouldn't have done it. I would have, but probably I would have done it probably 10 years later, 15 years. Because if I, if I, um, I had taken a job, probably I wouldn't be here today. The circumstances would have been different. Um, but because I started it and I commit to it, uh, I had to continue. And there is something that I, that I learned about myself as I do my projects. I, I don't like to stop in the middle. So I started. I realized this is not how I thought it was going to be. I realized this takes a lot of money, time, knowledge, experience. I was naive about the business part and about myself as well. I was thinking, oh, I'm Superman. Of course, I sit down, I write the code, but then, no. Nah. Uh, so, but I, but I had already committed. I had decided to do it. And I said, I'm not going to stop in the middle. Uh, so uh, here we are, five years, just launched it uh, about, uh, about 10 days ago, and uh, I was wrong, my teacher was right, yeah, I wish I had listened to his advice, it was a rough journey, but nonetheless, I'm grateful, and I say to myself, if 
because there are other projects. As I said, I write a lot of ideas in my notebook. My notebook is full of ideas. Some of them, I'm sure, uh, no great idea, but nonetheless, there are few that I think they would make good money, they would have good impact. If this experience that I had, I thought it would take me six months to one year, but it took me five years. If I learned from it, um, the next projects I do, I would... I would be more productive, more efficient, I would do it fast, etc. I would do it within the time frame that I have planned. Then I will consider this five years uh, something good, something valuable, if it saves me 20 years ahead, right? That's the way I look at it. But if I start the next project and take me another five years, I'm going to shoot myself in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the time to, uh, you know, to, to spend five years on another project just to get a lunch you know uh, so I hope at least if I could if I could get that from out of this five years then I would consider this a win even if it took me so long but at least it would save me a lot a lot of time down the road I think you'll be more efficient now now you've actually had that experience and I don't think you were wrong I think actually now you can present to your professor look I did it you know, it's taken me five years rather than yeah. a year um, it's a really great point you mentioned about ideas, which I do this actually in my apartment. I've got in my shower, I've got like a yeah. waterproof board. Yeah. I've got next to my bed, I've got a, a writing stuff. And you have down. to write it right away. Yeah. Because sometimes, if the, because there is that moment of, of, of magical thinking that comes to you in a few seconds. And it's a big idea, but somehow your brain just, it's like a flashlight. Mm. Wow, you see, and if you don't, and sometimes it happened to me. I am on, in, on the bed about to sleep, and something good come to me about my app. Or, I say, I'll write it tomorrow, and I wake up tomorrow. I say, I remember it was a good idea. What was it? Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the app. Yeah. What is Seer? So imagine you have the superpower to watch any place in the world, anytime, life. That's the heart of it. The ability to watch any place, anytime, anywhere, life. Literally. Now, the next question is how? How is it possible? Um, now, a lot of people, when I tell them this, watch any place in the world, anytime, life, they say, oh, well, uh, uh, how about Google Street Map? How about Baidu Street Map? How about YouTube? No. Or well, how about a live stream and just walking around? Yes. Uh, those uh, services, they don't give you the ability for you to decide anywhere, anytime. If you are watching live streaming, there is someone in charge of that live streaming who decides the time, who decides the place. Uh, Google Street Map or Baidu Street Map, first, they are not live. Second, they have recordings of only famous places around the world, big streets, etc. And it's outdated. So if the streets was recorded last year, now you want to know right now what is happening in your neighborhood, what is happening in New York, in London, Marrakesh, Sao mm. Paulo, you name it. Happens like this. So how does it work? Uh, we have a map inside our app. You go inside the map, you type an address. Then see it, scan the area around that address that you have uh, put into the map, and find users nearby. Those users are just normal users, just like you and me. There's nothing special about them. They don't have to be a special streamers, no. As long as they have the, the app. Once, once the users nearby found, you have their profiles, you check one of them, you check where they are located, right? And you also you check whether, when was the last time this person was here? And probably his location at, at this place was recorded 30 minutes ago. So we also tell you that, so you can make a, an educate, an informed decision. So you see the profile, you press on the person, and then you see his pricing. So inside our app, each user, uh, select and decide how much you want to be paid as a host. Uh, if you like the pricing, 
uh, the breakdown pricing goes this like this. First, we have the first minute. You'll have to decide the first minute uh, how much, and minimum has to be one dollar. Okay. Then you decide how much for every extra minute next, and the minimum price for that has to be zero point one dollar. So you can take it as high as as you want. Uh, as my friend like to say, well, imagine I'm having a birthday party with the, the president of the United mm -hmm. States. I want to I wanna put the price high. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we don't have a ceiling how high the price is. We just have a minimum pricing. So you see his pricing and uh, we have option either you want to make a paid call or a free call. So the host, he decide whether he want to provide free minutes or not, etc. It's fully controlled by the host. So you call him. What happened is he, op he opened his phone. He opened the back camera, right? Like this. He opened the back camera. And you as a viewer, you're watching his view, his surrounding through his back camera. He doesn't see you. He doesn't hear you. So he opened his back camera and he started walking you around. You hear the surrounding and you're watching everything live. You as a viewer, optionally, you can turn on your mic if you want to talk to him. But as a viewer, your camera is never, uh, never open. And we have added something also cool to our app, the user interface of the live streaming. It looks like a video game. And it is a language agnostic user interface. So let's say you're calling someone in Paris, you don't speak French. You don't have to worry about that. So. On your user interface, you have direction buttons. You send him requests, hey, move left, move right, put your hand up, put your hand down, move forward, stop, give me a 360 view. So we developed this language agnostic user interface to overcome the language barrier all over the world. So uh, also if you are shy, this also helpful. I am shy, some people are, you know, they are shy to talk to a stranger. This also helps. Uh, so this is the heart of SAIS. Watch any place in the world, any time live. And you just search on a map and voila, you're connected and you have a one-on-one -on -one live video streaming. So what we have right now is a one-on-one -on -one live virtual travel experience. Down the road, we are going to add the broadcasting option where you have many people join to the session but still our most valuable feature is the one-on-one -on -one, uh, aspect of it it's personalized it's fully controlled by you as a viewer uh, I can tell you to go inside the elevator show me the kitchen show me the the hotel uh, restaurant go inside whatever fully controlled as if you are personally there just last night I, uh, one of our new users from Germany, he recorded a beautiful video on that, and I called him, and uh, and and it, it's 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 really a nice feeling, and when you try it, oh my God, it's uh, and with the VR and AR becoming more and more popular, and also becoming especially the the VR headsets becoming more popular and more cheaper. Uh, this is also a big opportunity for us because AR and VR existed before, but it, one, the technology was still slow, still improving. The headsets, expensive, big, but uh, every year it's getting better and better, cheaper and smaller, and that works for our advantage. So that's see it uh, in short. There are a lot of features that I will tell you about as we go. So let's unpack this, right? Because I've got many questions. Let's start with the obvious one, which would be yeah. moderating this, yeah. right? So how do you moderate the, firstly, the, the, the star, the, 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 the actual, uh, what do you call them? The, uh, the host. The host, the right? What, what, how do you moderate that host that they're just going to fulfill the function of showing something around? They're not going to yeah. be, because human beings are flawed, right? Yeah. yeah. And on the other side, Another question would be on the security side. Mm. You know, I'm sure for any yeah. country, if you're going into a sensitive area, I mean, there's a load, so many questions. Those are good questions. They do come up. And when they come up, they tend to be serious. Mm. Yeah, especially the, the security one. 
you know, uh, uh, there's the funny part of it, but there's a serious part of it. The funny part of it is your girlfriend spying on you. Like, uh, he told me he's having dinner with his friends. Okay, I'm going to search, find a spider host, the streamer in that area. Uh, I'll tell him to move inside the restaurant. Is he sitting there, right? Mm. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's the funny part of it. But the serious part of it, as you mentioned, right? Sometimes there, is, there are sensitive areas, military areas. Or sometimes just there is a political ten, uh, tension somewhere, mm. right? And... Like Gaza, let's say. Yeah, like, like would, Gaza, would, yeah. Would this work in Gaza right now? Yeah, yeah, it would, yeah. Uh, I will come to that mm. later. So, what we have developed, we have developed a monitoring system uh, for moderating the platform. Uh, we call it, you know, collective, collective management or um, shared management of our platform. This is unique and new. And no other social media in the world has this. But personally, I developed this this uh, process not just because uh, I would say I'm worried my app will be banned. Or, that's one aspect of it, but I think it's secondary. But I also I understand there are different cultures around the world. There are different customs, and being lucky traveling outside of my country and meeting people from all over the world, I I realized, yeah, the world is big and it's different, yeah? And what might be wrong to you is right to someone else or vice versa. And I learned to respect that, right? So the same thing goes on an individual level, also goes on a country level or a, or a society level, societal level. Uh, so we developed this process, it works this way. We are going to give uh, every government around the world, right, access to a web portal, right? This web portal gives you access to the content inside our platform. So you can immediately see how all the videos that's being shared right now, right, in real time as they are being we made this. A, we made the web portal because it's easier to manage. You can use it on a computer. You can have multiple videos at the same time rather than small phone. It's it's not so very effective. So let's give uh, an example. Let's say uh, South Korea, for example, right? The government of South Korea. They have access to our portal. There is a certain area that they don't want people to be able to stream live streaming. It could be a military area, whatever. So they go inside our portal, there is a map, they will say this area, they put the coordinates, right? And they say this should be off any recording, any live streaming. Because our app is really unique. You watch any place, anywhere in the world, as if you are walking yourself there, right? Uh, there is a privacy risk there. So they say, we don't want anyone to broker. On. So as they do that, this in real time, update on our system. So if a user enter that area and try to record a video, we tell them, this is, there's no rec recording, is not allowed in this area. If you try to do live streaming, it wouldn't work. And we give this to the government agent, the official government agent. Uh, he decides, you know, he doesn't have to call us. It's your country, your culture, your law. We respect that. Uh, you manage it as you, as you wish. So it, it has two sides. One, respect side. We respect your culture, your law. And it has also business side, being pragmatic. Uh, so this is, uh, this is unique. So we are going to be monitoring our platform, right? We have our regulations, we have our rules. But on top of our rules, there are the government's who understand what is best for their people, for their country, for their custom. They make those decisions. We give them access. And of course, we don't give them access to users' uh, private data, no. Mm. If they want uh, some information about a specific citizen of their specific country, then that's, that process has to go through the legal uh, system, mm. the judicial system. And, but 
monitoring part, yeah, the content part, go ahead, monitor it as you see fit, mm -hmm. as, uh, you know, what works best for your mm -hmm. culture and your country. And this is a very unique uh, part mm -hmm. in, us, in our social platform. And we want to be open and transparent about it. And how do you screen the host? Is it based on how... You know, they have a rating, I take it, eventually, you know, they'll have I don't know, five stars or, or whether yeah. you, you go with them. So is there uh, an impetus on this then to make sure that they're actually delivering the best experience for, mm. for the users? Um, so and how do you make sure that they're actually going to be well behaved and just stick to the, the route that's being told by the, the yeah. users? My intent, my plan and my hope is whatever we do we will we want to be fair to everyone so if we apply a certain rule to a user in the us we apply the same to a user in china to a user in in south africa so that is my intent i want to be fair to everyone equally um but once you give it you give a tool to the mass something will happen something will go wrong but our intent as and my intent as a founder as a ceo is to make it as safe as possible and and learn from the you know the challenges that come right i don't know what will happen i don't know there are use cases that i didn't think of but as they happen uh, the only promise i can make is i will approach it with the fairness and being equal so if a rule applies here it will apply everywhere in the world whether you are my brother or my enemy or my friend or a stranger the rule applies mm -hmm. to everyone so there are different levels how we can manage this one is our what you call it terms of conditions inside our app that you agree on we will keep iterating and making it better and better uh, second is our monitoring, so our team doing monitoring the content, monitoring the users. So if someone behaves bad, we ban them, etc. And there is the the shared monitoring that I told you with the government agents. So this is these are the three levels that we can work with right now. Do you think it's encouraging users to then go and visit the countries? Are they getting a flavor, or do you feel yeah. it's more? People are just going to stick at home. Even though we are building a virtual app. But there is nothing that can replace a face-to-face -face experience. Mm. No way. Uh, you know, as there is no way any app or any virtual reality uh, headset is going to replace that. Um, so we are a virtual reality app, but we will encourage people to travel there. And actually, part of our plan, when we have the money, we are actually we are going to be rewarding our best users with physical uh, trips, mm. paid trips. So if you are a good host or a good viewer, you've been our uh, one of our best uh, users of the app. Yeah, we'll call you and say, hey, mm. here he is five thousand mm. dollars. Go travel to Morocco. Go travel mm. to Indonesia, Shanghai, mm. whatever you like. Right, New York. So we will do that, yeah. I think the monetization possibilities are endless, right? It could be travel companies, hotels. Yeah. Whenever I talk to someone from different business background, they come up with their mm. own mm. perspective. Right? Because the app is, I can watch any place. It's, it's similar to the idea, I can go wherever I want mm. personally. So that's, that's the app. Mm. So when you go somewhere, what do you do? Sometimes you go there for business, sometimes for, for pleasure, sometimes uh, for studying, sometimes to eat. So literally you can use the app. If you, if you hear some noise downstairs, but so lazy to go and check what is downstairs, mm -hmm. your apartment or your neighborhood, you can actually just use the app. Let me find who is nearby mm -hmm. and show me what is around. Oh, you right. see it fulfilling that function as well, not just yeah. a travel thing, but... There's some noise outside and it's... Uh, so there's a safety element to it as well. Right? Mm. Our vision is whatever you want to see. Like right now, I'm sitting here, right? And I want to know how is the vibe in the band right now. I'm in Shanghai. Mm. But I'm, I'm, I'm 
thinking whether I should go to the bend, the riverside or not. But I'm, I don't know how is the vibe there, right? So I could mm. use this, even in my own city, I check the bend, is it crowded? Mm. How is it going? And I decide whether, mm. uh, whether I go or not. So we, want, we, we don't want just to focus on the tr mm. travel industry, but it is important to us. But whatever you want to see, see it is there and we want to we want it to become sort of like a meme mm. all right you sit in you and your friend talking about a trip talking about business and oh god let me see it mm. i'm gonna see it and check it out just to play the devil's advocate on the yeah. other side isn't that sometimes the the wonder of traveling is the fact that it is a new place and you haven't seen it before yeah. how do you counteract with that i want to see the feedback of the users to answer that question and, and react based based on that. But for now, I don't have all the answers. But I would never have all the answers, but that's okay. Well, I think we do research anyway. Yeah, Before we yeah, go yeah. on holiday somewhere, we are looking at a YouTube video or we're looking yeah. at you know the old travel brochures and holidays. So I think this is another great piece of technology. It sounds like a great app that you can get that flavor or yeah. maybe you don't have the opportunity to travel right now, but yeah. this is just giving me that little insight. And this is still new to me. Uh, you know, we just launched about 10 days ago and we have about, I think uh, 250 users so far. We haven't done any paid marketing yet, paid ads. This is just us doing grinding and talking to our friends one by one. And we got to 250 about now. We got... 251. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 252. And I just behind the camera. <laughs> uh, by the way, speaking of, of downloading my app, I have a blacklist. I tell my friend a joke. Right. I say, I have a blacklist. If you don't download my app, I swear to God, my friend, <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> and he says, what? I, I said, you know what's going to happen to you? say what? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I said the same about this podcast. You don't watch this in full. Yeah. I'm going to go crazy. You know, oh, my God. It's going to happen to you. Uh, so two years ago, uh, uh, a lady called me from Australia. Uh, and this happened to me for the first time in my life. So this journey is new to me, right? She called me and I said, hey, is this a focusing company? And I said, yes. I said, um, I saw your app. I'm trying to register. We had the old version. And we had to, you know, put it aside and build a new one. It has some technical issues. But she couldn't register. And, and I said, oh, okay. How, how, how did you hear about Busink? And she was telling me how she, she likes to travel and she wants to use our app, etc. That was the first uh, user feedback I ever had. And someone, the, the lesson here is someone found this so valuable to him or to her that to go to the trouble of finding my phone number on the website, she sent me emails and it's like, oh, wow, she did. And she called me. She's just a normal user. Uh, so that's, that was, uh, how is it, my... It's like my first statistics mm -hmm. would this work or not. If someone takes the trouble to do all this, try to call you so they can register in the app because they want to do this. Uh, so hopefully we find more users like her. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to have that mushrooming effect, yeah. right? So she'll tell her friends or her family. You can use this for sport. Mm -hmm. If Liverpool playing against Arsenal, mm -hmm. imagine having say is do, someone mm. sitting in the front row and giving you live streaming from mm. the front row. When I watch a concert, Tyler Swift, whatever, mm. right? Um, you want to come to study in China? When I came here the first time, I was looking for videos and pictures of my future university. Mm. I was looking into different universities. This is one of, probably this is one of the, the things that was at the back of my head that led into mm. see it. I was so thirsty, hungry to find every picture, every video about the universities I'm planning to choose. I want to know the, about the dormitory, about... Uh, I see Aziz, not in his house, right? I was uh, the same, yeah, yeah. And if I had seats at that time, I would have fulfilled my curiosity, my need. 
to learn everything about the university I, I intend to study before I decide whether I should apply for it or not. Uh, and you can use for businesses. A lot of friends outside of China, either they don't have the budget or don't have the time. But there is a big expo in Guangzhou or in Shanghai. And if an app like Seeds exists, they would have someone in the expo or the canton fair walking around for them as if they are there themselves in person. Mm -hmm. And the payment aspects of it, it makes it less, um, how to say, you know, I can ask you to do something for me one time, but if I want to be comfortable, I'd rather pay you. Mm -hmm. Just like a taxi driver, he's mm -hmm. driving me and I'm telling him mm -hmm. go left, right. I don't feel... Oh, I'm asking so much because this is this is a contract and you, there is a payment involved here. So the same thing with it. Since I'm paying you, you understand that this is a job. Another area is uh, real estate. I talk to some friends. Uh, so you want to buy a house, but there are 10 houses to check. But you don't have the time to go check all of them. You want to go and check one of them in person. But having seen it, and you are in charge of everything you see. You choose the angle, you choose uh, where the streamer goes, etc. You will have someone doing the live streaming for you. You pay him, he walk you around the neighborhood, he will walk you inside the house. Uh, and some people say, well, how about I just use FaceTime or WeChat? Well, yes, you can. But the FaceTime and WeChat uses only with the people you know. But our app is everyone who has seen it around the world automatically become your eyes. Host gets paid by user, and then at the end of that journey, that experience, they then have a rating, right? They give yes. them a rating. Is it out of five stars, or how does it end? Or five comment? stars, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so you're building up a little social media profile there. As we well. are, yes. We have uh, yeah. followers, following, mm -hmm. and we gradually making it more mm -hmm. complex but for now it's simple we have comments we have uh, ratings yeah and then are you taking some percentage off of that as well so if that you'll take out that the monetizing uh, part of it is we take 20 percent from the payment that the viewer pays the host right so we take 20 percent from that but if you are a good host we would uh, take only 10 percent for example mm -hmm. this is part of our uh, business plan mm -hmm. If you are a good host or a good business partner, we take only 10%. If you are someone, uh, superstar to us, you help us to grow the platform, we take 0% commission, yeah. So how do you be a good host and then how would you be that superstar? What would be your advice to someone that want to be a host somewhere in the world? So one, we keep track of how many minutes of streaming you have done as a viewer and as a host and we have two ratings we have ratings as a viewer we have ratings as a host because you know sometimes you are the viewer okay i'm telling you go there and there but you're so annoying for example mm -hmm. or you turn on the microphone and you might say something bad to them right. so we rate the two experience separately the host rate the viewer as a viewer mm -hmm. and vice versa and just one thing to clarify the host and the viewer, uh, you don't need two accounts. It is one app, one account. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I call you, sometimes you call me. It's just the, uh, it's just the position uh, that changes. But the act, there is one account that works both ways. Uh, so yeah, we have written that. Uh, so we keep track how many minutes of live streaming you have done, mm -hmm. also as a viewer and as a host. Mm -hmm. And this is how we decide if you are a good host or not. The other aspect is if you have a good, number of followers online so if you go to youtube you find a lot of people walking around in the street that's it that's all they do all day right so those are one of our uh main targets to talk to which we are going to do, start doing next week um so if you have a good number of followers we will approach you and say hey this is our app this is how it works would you like to be part of this early stage and we would probably take zero commission mm -hmm. from any live streaming you do if you join us mm -hmm. yeah so this is a win-win situation i think about i'm doing i'm gonna do this thank you and yeah. there is another thing and another incentive we use is giving people free credit 
Mm. So when you register on our app, we give you five dollar free credits. Mm. So you can try it out. Mm. Though there is the free option if the host wants to use it. Mm. Uh, so we give you five dollar credits. But if you are a good host or a good viewer, uh, we monitor the the, the platform. You know, mm. sometimes we will give you ten dollar free credits. Mm. We give you a hundred dollar free credits. So we're all about profits at the Panda Profits podcast. How much have you actually raised, and how did you do it? Uh, I raised so far one hundred and thirty thousand. The way I did it is. I'll tell you, I did the craziest thing in the world. I don't think anyone has done it. Probably it's illegal, but it's, <laughs> but, but like uh, some some guys say, well, if if it is questionable, then it's okay. And part of being an entrepreneur is is having a, a risk tolerance. I think having a risk tolerance and and being hopeful. I think this too probably needed for every entrepreneur. Otherwise, you cannot operate because. You literally uh, take a huge risk and you don't know the outcome. And you need risk tolerance. You need optimism. Otherwise, you cannot move forward. So the way I raised it, I put up a website, right? And I said, I'm going to launch this app. This was f five years ago. And I said, here is a payment link. I'm selling the shares of my startup that I am doing right now, it, you can buy shares with my company right now. And the shares you buy, I'm going to use the money to build the app. And I put screenshots. The app didn't exist at that time, but I designed this, this uh, screenshots, etc. And I put a payment link. Yeah. I got, well, it was mostly my family and mm. my friends, probably $200 shares that I sold. Um, so I remember the first one, the first person was a friend of mine. She bought $100 shares. So as I am doing that, I don't have the money. I started selling shares of a, of a plan that I believe it's good. So if you believe it's good, buy shares, $1 per share right now. And I was spreading words among my friends. I'm doing this app. I'm doing this app. I'm doing this app. So a friend of mine, he met my partner, my current partner, and he told him, hey, I have a friend Bilal in Shanghai. Uh, he's doing this and this. You know, my partner said, this is really cool. I have a talk to him. So we had a talk. Um, he said he likes it. Then we needed to agree to the terms. I've never met my partner. He never met me. How would he trust me? So we agreed to 100,000 investments and this is a lesson probably someone could use is he doesn't know me i don't know him but we just talk online we have this friend who put us together but uh, i said look rather than give me a hundred thousand all up front you don't give it to me you give it to the mm -hmm. company how about we do installments right mm -hmm. the the agreement we had is twenty thousand per month or 20,000 whenever the need rises. So to build trust. So he doesn't, he doesn't risk all his money at once. So the idea was, all right, you give me the first 20,000, I'll be spending it, renting the office, hiring, doing the legal work, etc. And he sees that and he sees the money being spent and how it is used. And he's from uh, Istanbul, originally from uh, Afghanistan. His name is Mikmal. And he's a businessman uh, based in Istanbul. So this way, he gave me the first installment, but at the same time, he sees that money being spent on how being and the trust is being built gradually. Mm. Uh, so that was that was probably one of the best decisions we made. As how are, how am I gonna get your money? But you you don't know me, right? Uh, yeah, we spend that money. We hire people. Uh, the best thing that happened in my life is hiring my team. And the worst thing that happened in my life, at, at least in terms of my project, is losing them. When we run out of the money, uh, I had to let them go. And actually, they worked for me for at least one month for free. Mm -hmm. They continue to stay. They hope that. Uh, so when I lost them, that was the worst thing that 
that happens with me. And uh, anyway, I hope I will recover from that later on. I'll hope I'll bring them back again in the future. And if they are somewhere else, I hope I'll have enough money. At least I'll send them a nice mm. gift. Yeah. Mm. Maybe I'll buy them a house in, in Bali. It's not a lot of money to build a, what you've built. It's incredible. But also I have uh, my other partner, Lian, Chinese. Mm. He also spent quite, uh, quite a lot of money as mm. well. I also my own personal money. So it's not just that. It's actually mm. more than that. Yeah. right? Uh, and plus you cannot put a price on the effort. Mm. And time, right? Yeah, it's it's priceless. Mm. It's uh, no matter it could be just a birthday of your niece that you missed because uh, I live far away from my country, uh, and I see it, you know my nieces, my brothers, my parents, you know everyone getting old, growing up. Uh, you cannot also put a price on that as well. Well, I wish you all the success of it, mate. I think it's going to be great. So friend. check out see it, okay? See it on see yeah. it, right? And uh, I remember four years ago meeting you at an event and you telling me about this app. And you're one of the few people that's actually built an actual MVP. You've built that product and you didn't try and shill it. I, right? built, I built two versions of it. Version one had right. issues. We built it. We had our employees. Then had to let yeah. them go. We ran out of the money. Then I had to go and do a bit of freelancing so I can finance mm. myself. But I never wanted to take a full-time job because if I did... I don't think I would have been here today. I would still launch the app, but probably would be mm. way later mm. than that, right? So yeah, I went in all the way. Yeah, I yeah. just remember the conversation we had, and it was just, oh, I'm developing this app, but you didn't try and plug it. You were just, oh, I'm developing this, it's going to be cool, and um, I'll, I'll keep in touch with that guy. And you've been a great supporter of the podcast, so I really appreciate it. So go and see it, and uh, where can people get in touch with you? Uh, so we have cs.live, we have our, if you type cs app on mm. Google, uh, you will find us. We have our YouTube channel, CS Live. we have our Instagram, we have Facebook, uh, App Store, Google, uh, Apple. Thank you so much, really Thank appreciate you. it. Take care guys, see you next time.